Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, but if you're new here, my name's Tyler and I just do consistent content on all things related hockey in the HL overall. We're back at it with another video, and this time we're discussing, yes, the TSN trade bait board. And I want to give a quick shout out to Hot Take Hockey because I know we did a video just like this a couple days ago when I was planning to do this because I normally have a list of what my goal is for the week. And ironically he had a very similar video out so i just want to put that out there quick shout out to him make sure to check out his video regarding his idea of the trade bait board and where he think where he thinks each player is going to land that is currently on it and when it comes to this board it is very subject to trade uh changes we all know this since the trade bait board first came out this angel offseason it has not been the same as changed drastically in certain positions with players being added players being taken off and players already being dealt as we all know but that's what i'll be discussing with you today a breakdown of the trade bait board on tsn and I'll give you a quick preview of it and my thoughts separately as to where I think each player is going to land, if anywhere, this offseason and why it would make sense for these individual teams based off rumors, among other things. And we know this is going to be a crazy week in the NHL starting tomorrow with the NHL draft in which I'll be live streaming. So make sure to stay tuned for that and stop by and join us. It's going to be so much fun. I'll be live streaming an hour before the draft starts at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure to come along. We're going to have a great uh, hockey discussion. Who we think is going to go where for the draft. So trades we could propose see happening and then have our genuine feedback and reaction when the when these picks actually happen themselves in the draft tomorrow night and then on wednesday of course we have the qualifying offers must be sent for all teams regarding their pending rfa so a lot of things are going to happen there then on thursday the buyout window closes for the nhl and then friday is the start of the free agent frenzy in the nhl so a lot is expected to happen this week might be the craziest week in nhl in nhl history at least in recent history nonetheless uh, i just simply can't wait and i hope that you guys are a part of it on this channel make sure to stop by for the live streams and make sure to stay till the end of this video to get all the information the deets and hit that like and subscribe button of course if you are new here and without further ado let's get right into this video all right, guys, as you can see, we are on TSN site, and I, I know this is very similar to how Hot Take Hockey did it as well. Um, but nonetheless, it still holds true. This is still a great idea, and um, shout out to him as well for his video. I should have had mine up sooner, but nonetheless, it doesn't matter. This is great about the hockey community. We all do a lot of relative things and share our thoughts, and they really differ a lot of times, especially regarding this list. I know that mine is definitely not up to par with really anyone else in the hockey community for the most part, with all of them being exact, that's for sure, and that's what makes this community great but nonetheless we are on tsn's list as you can see and i'll just break down each player real quick for you and then i will get off of this screen and show you my full face again and i'll give you my predictions for each one through 50 starting off we have all reckman larson pat patrick Liney, matt dumba matt murray mark andre flurry josh anderson jake debrusque ottawa's second round picks i won't be touching on that in this video jake for tannin tuka rask keith yandel yanni gore tyler johnson alex gore and ryan donato who, who was already dealt ryan strom alex petrangelo andreas Janssen, elvis merzlikens jonas Corbisal, Darcy Kemper, Noah Hannafin, Freddie Anderson. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, Brandon Saad, Matthew Shane, Ryan Johansson, Nick Benino, Brady Shea, Max Domi, Shane Gossesbear, Kyle Palmieri, Philip Deneau, Johnny Boychuk, Brandon Sutter, Jaden Schwartz, Tyler Bozak, Jonathan Marchessault, Al Alec Martinez, Paul Stasny, Phil Kessel, Chris Russell, Vincent Trocek, Alex Wemberg, Brandon Montour, Tony D'Angelo, Evan Bouchard, Devin Dumnik, who was traded earlier today, Martin Jones, Dougie Hamilton, and Sergey Bobrovsky. A lot of very interesting names, a lot of great names, too, nonetheless. And without further ado, let's get right into my predictions all right guys let's get right into this of course we'll all recommend larson my prediction for him at this point in time it has to be the boston ruins for me it's them or vancouver as we all know or he's not going to be dealt i don't see him staying in arizona i know that arizona will like him to have an expanded list where he would like to go but it's boston or vancouver and i'm not just sure if vancouver can make it work given all the contract situations that they have and while i know that boston is stretching a little bit getting rid getting rid of tory krug really having oel and that in at as his replacement as they feel is a better all-around defenseman from all the reports that i've seen i think all reckman larson will land in boston between those two teams but i could be wrong either way i think it will be a solid fit for him either way they will definitely utilize oel for sure but next up we have patrick line and i think line will go to the philadelphia flyers i think columbus um and some other teams have shown interest carolina hurricanes Montreal Canadiens. they're all solid opportunities but the flyers are apparently really aggressive uh, being aggressive in pursuing line a should he be available 
available just a matter of the right price for him and with niskanen just retired now now they have roughly six million cap space and this is something that they've been pondering for a while niskanen was waiting um to come back officially say he was going to retire after pondering the decision for a couple weeks that the flyers management gave him so that is when all the line a hype really started with the flyers over these past couple weeks so i think that goes in hand with niskanen's retirement not in a negative way for their case in trying to acquire him so i think if if line a does go anywhere his best fit right now could very well be the philadelphia flyers but columbus is definitely a close second in my mind next up we have matt dumba and matt dumba i think he will either land with the vancouver canucks or the winnipeg jets both for def obvious defensive reasons the halves you can consider giving the fact that they could give up a solid centerman and one of max domi or philip to but i'm not sure if they'll go down that route at this point in time given their right side of defense with jeff petrie and shea weber already there next up now we have matt murray and i think he'll go to the chicago blackhawks given the latest reporting coming out that there has been talks with the blackhawks trying to make an extension work it hasn't happened yet between the two parties but nonetheless uh, the Blackhawks do kind of look like the favorite at this point in time. Things could change, but I'm picking the Blackhawks as of right now with Matt Murray. Next up, we have Marc Andre Fleury. And I don't think Fleury will be dealt given his contract. I think he will be bought out at this point in time, and then he will be picked up by a team, probably a contending team for that matter. So, I, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm sold on him being traded, but I do definitely think his time in Vegas has come to an end. And if so, I can expect a buyout sooner rather than later as a window does close on Thursday as of, as of now. Next up, we have Josh Anderson for the Columbus Blue Jackets. I think Anderson is definitely going to be dealt. He is, of course, a um, RFA, and I don't think he's going to stay in Columbus going forward he's been subject to rumors for a while and i think the haves and the bruins are really close front runners at this point in time and if the bruins do get oel i'm not sure if they could able be able to command a cap hit as good as anderson will look in a boston uniform just given his type play style and how boston is i think the habs are more of the front runner between those two teams given the oel talks with boston at this point in time so because of that reason i'm picking the habs just to add more winger depth of course especially on that right side it will not hurt them by any means if they say don't go for a big fish in free agency then uh, anderson could very well be a good option and they have all the assets to make it happen Next up, we have um, Anderson, and I think, I'm sorry, I just said Anderson, DeBrusque now for the Boston Bruins. I think DeBrusque, uh, it's kind of far-fetched to say he'd be dealt, could he be part of that deal for OEL? He very well could be, but at the same time, I think that there is some significance behind him going to Edmonton. It might be uh, stretching a little bit at this point in time, but given his connection, of course, there with his family as it is in Edmonton, I think there's a solid chance he could land there, and the Oilers could definitely use that uh, winner depth. So if they say, you know, uh, are able to free up some more cap space um if they don't go all in on a huge defenseman this offseason cap wise then i think debrus could be in play here as i don't know if his future in boston is certain at this point in time at least but next up, next up at number eight is just the Ottawa picks. I'm not going to be talking about them. So number nine, we have Jake Vertanen. Vertanen looks like he's on his way out, and it's just a matter of where, and that is the biggest what if when it comes to Vertanen. I think Vertanen would be a very solid top nine winner to whichever team inquires on him. It's really hard to give an idea as to where he would land at this point in time. I would assume he could possibly go to a Eastern Conference team or he could stay in Canada to some extent um, to add some winger depth depending on the team. Edmonton does come to mind in that aspect too if they're able to take him on. So I think the Oilers are a team to consider once again. And I also think that there are some teams in the East to consider as well that would be interested in the likes of Vertanen more on a depth role possibly or just depending on the roster. I think the Buffalo Sabres are a team to consider as well. I think a lot of teams will be interested in Vertanen, but it's hard to pick a specific team at this point in time given how recent it was that he has been put on the rumor mill so be on the lookout for Brutanen though Next up, we have Tuka Rask. Rask is one of those where I find it very far-fetched to see him leave Boston, even given everything that's happening uh, with him leaving the qualifying round, among other things. I understood his reasoning, um, but I just don't see how Rask leaves Boston unless he retires. So because of that reason, I think Rask is staying put with the Bruins. Next up, we have Keith Yandel for the Panthers. Iron Man in the NHL, of course. I was a huge fan of his as a Rangers fan in his short stint there as well. Um, I think Yandel is a guy who will stay with Florida. I find it far-fetched to say that they'll be able to get rid of of that cap but at the same time bill zito did get rid of matheson's cap hit so anything is possible at the end of the day so be on the lookout for yandel to be dealt this offseason possibly but i wouldn't bank on it at this point in time Next up, we have Yanni Gord for the Tampa Bay Lightning. It'll be hard to get rid of him given his no trade clause, but the Detroit Red Wings do come to mind with his connection with Stevie Yzerman. So if he is interested in playing under Stevie Y again, then I think that is a team to consider. But at the same time, if I'm a Stanley, Stanley Cup champion going into next season, the last thing I would probably want to do is lead that team, let alone go to the worst team in the NHL. So 
Just things to consider. Next up, uh, Tyler Johnson at number seven, uh, 13, I should say. Uh, Johnson will be subject to plenty of trade rumors. He's already been in talks with Tampa as possibly being dealt. Um, I think the Buffalo Sabres come to mind as well. Um, I think the Winnipeg Jets are a possibility too, given that center depth. They could definitely use him in that top nine possibly. Um, so things to consider there. I'm not necessarily sold as to where Johnson will land, but I think his time in Tampa is close to done if they do find the suitor. And NHL GMs just love him helping each other out which really frustrates me but nonetheless i do think tyler johnson may very well be on his way out um he very well could be with the expansion team in a year or so when that happens but until then i'm not sure if i see a future with him in tampa but we'll see he does have a no trade clause as well then alex corn up next alex corn is the only guy in these trade rumors that has a modified no trade clause so i think the new jersey devils and the la canes really stand out here they're two teams that could definitely benefit from the leadership of corn just coming off stanley cup had over 26 had 26 goals this past season very very strong campaign for him an impressive one nonetheless um but it's just a matter of are they on his modified no trade list i don't think that they are but even if they aren't and tampa really is trying to get rid of him it would be hard for him to want to stay in my opinion if a team is really trying to push you out so it's a tough situation there i don't think all three of these guys will leave but if one of them is dealt then i think corn is definitely up there given the fact that he does already have a list as it is as to teams he would consider going to or at least be willing to but i'm not sure if they are willing but devils make a lot of sense the la kings make a lot of sense as well uh, Ryan Donato already dealt as we all know number 16 now Ryan Strom Ryan Strom is the only New York Ranger currently who hasn't been qualified as an RFA Tony D'Angelo has Alexander Georgiev has and Brandon Lemieux has Strom hasn't so that leaves you wondering does he have a future in New York I'm not sure and as a Rangers fan I might expand in this in another video if I have enough time I'm not sure if I will though um, but Strom is a guy who very well could be on his way out I think the Buffalo Sabres are a possibility regarding the draft as well so be on the lookout there um, the Winnipeg Jets are another team to consider I know I'm, con I'm connected them with a lot but there is a reason why i think these two teams in particular could very well be connected even the minnesota wild are another team to consider if they are looking for say a top six forward there um he would be a 2c for them wouldn't necessarily be a 1c by any means but it is something to consider but i think buffalo and winnipeg are teams to take to take into consideration nonetheless but next up we have petrangelo and i think petrangelo's rights if they are dealt it'll go to the florida panthers or the vegas golden knights so keep on the lookout for that Next up, we have Andreas Janssen. Janssen's a guy who I definitely think will be traded by Toronto. Not too um, too sold as to where he will land. So be on the lookout for that. But I don't think he has a future in Toronto at this point in time. Um, Elvis Merzlikens and Jonas Corbisalo at 19 and 20 on the list. I think neither of them are going to be dealt unless they are part of, say, a bigger deal with Patrick Laine, per se, to add goaltending depth and take some relief um, for the likes of Connor Hollebuck. Because actually, no, I shouldn't say that because Bersois was just extended, I believe, to at least another year contract. So if that's the case, scratch that. But nonetheless, I think either of those goaltenders, I think they're going to stay at this point in time. I think Merzlikens may be susceptible to trade if the opportunity presents itself. But I don't see them dealing Merzlikens as a core piece of a trade unless he is part of a much bigger deal. So be on the lookout there. But next now, at number 21, we have Darcy Kemper for the Arizona Coyotes. I think he may very well land with the Calgary Flames if they don't go, say, the Jacob Markstrom route. So be on the lookout there. I'm not sold on Kemper being dealt necessarily, given the fact that they would probably like to get rid of Antti Ranta first. I'm not sure what Arizona's doing here, honestly, but they have been uh, said that they're going to trade the rights of Taylor Hall. So be on the lookout for that as well to get negotiation rights. But I think Darcy Kemper is going to be on his way out, possibly. And if so, I will look at the Battle, battle of Alberta and both the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames as possible suitors. Next up, now we have Noah Hannafin for the Calgary Flames. I think he's staying put. I don't think he will be dealt unless it's part of a massive deal as well. Freddie Anderson for Toronto, I do think will be dealt this offseason very well. And I think the Carolina Hurricanes are still a team to consider. So be on the lookout there. I did a video on that not too long ago. Talk talking about that possibility um, nonetheless but I do think Anderson will be on his way out and I think there is a solid chance he will stay in the Eastern Conference. Brandon Saad for the, for the Chicago Blackhawks, another team to look at to free up cap space. As we all know, Blackhawks don't have a good cap situation, haven't for the past decade. Um, Saad, you could very well see on his way out to a possible team. The Habs come to mind, depending on their winner situation, if they say don't go for Anderson. Um, there are a lot of teams that could be interested in the likes of Saad. It's just a matter of are they committed to taking on his cap hit or not? That's the biggest question when it comes to him. Saad is still a reliable top nine forward for sure that can contribute on special teams at times. It's just a matter of him being consistent at the end of the day and really doing well in a different scenery so we'll see what happens when it comes to solid but don't be surprised to see him dealt this offseason next up we have matt duchene for the national predators duchene i don't see getting dealt just because of his cap hit i find it kind of hard pressed to see him moved this early 
this early in that long-term contract. And Ryan Johansson, it would be more susceptible of the two. I think they very well could free up one of these centermen, at least, or even Nick Benino, if the opportunity presents itself and they say go for a bigger fish, either in free agency or via trade for the likes of maybe, I don't know, offer sheeting. I don't know, maybe Matt Borzell. I touched on that in a previous video. I think David Poyle has some tricks up his sleeves this offseason, really wants to change up the direction of this roster and make sure that they're contending big time next season and the years going forward. So be on the lookout for them, for either of those players. I'm not sold on them being dealt, but Nick Benino definitely looks susceptible to trade. I'm not sure where he would land, but he's a guy to consider as well, and he is currently 27th on the, uh, on the list. Brady Shea at 28. I think Shea very well could be dealt, even though he has looked solid in a short stint with Carolina. And I think the Edmonton Oilers are a team to watch, especially given Oscar Clefbaum is surely going to be out for a while if he does, in fact, need surgery on his shoulder. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I think Shane Goss is spare. Um, Max Domi first. I apologize. Domi at 29 on the list. I think Domi could go to the New York Rangers if they do move Ryan Strom, either as part of that deal or to, say, Buffalo or somewhere else. So we'll see what happens there. But I think one of Domi or Duneau may very well get hard consideration by the rangers that we really don't find out until say a deal happens um so be on the lookout for that i think domi could be a strong fit for the jets or the wild as well there's a, these are all teams to consider but i would not discount the new york rangers at this point in time they want to upgrade that center position they've been rumored to some players and max domi would be a very strong fit on the likes of artemi panarin surely better than ryan strom in my personal opinion at least i could be wrong but he is just one year removed from a 70 plus point season around a habs team and their forward group that isn't even on the same spectrum as the Rangers currently are. So take those things into uh, consideration. What would he look like alongside Artemi Panarin? Who knows? But I can tell you one thing. It would not be a bad thing for his case by any means. Um, next up, we have... Shane Goss to spare for the Philadelphia Flyers. They definitely want to get rid of that contract, no question, to free up more cap space. Niskanen retiring may have a little bit of a factor into things just because they are going to be lacking more defensive depth. So that may halt them from, say, dealing Goss to spare. But I do expect some teams to be interested. I would look at the Jets as well because they would like to address that defense, no question. So be on the lookout for the Jets. I think Goss to spare very well could land somewhere, possibly in Canada. Even look at the likes of Vancouver Canucks, possibly, if they don't land all of Reckman Larson. They are still going to try to address that defense defensive front and Goss's bear could have fared well in a new scenery with the likes of the Vancouver Canucks and show more of his offensive up offensive upside and that way they won't be completely reliant per se on Quinn Hughes yes I know that they have Alexander Edler as well who's solid but nonetheless I don't think Goss's spare will hurt by a change of scenery in any stretch of the imagination but next up now, we have at 31, Kyle Palmer Palmieri. And Palmieri, I think, is done in New Jersey. And I think the Buffalo Sabres are another team to consider again. Um, the, the Sabres are connected to a lot of wainers, no question. But they have been rumored to have connections over this past week to the likes of Palmieri. And I think also the LA Kings come to mind as well. So take those two teams into account. Um, I think Philip Deneau next at 32 for the Montreal Canadiens. He very well could be dealt this offseason. Since really the playoffs ended for the Habs, he's been subject to plenty of trade rumors. I think Deneau could be on his way out. Um, I won't bank on it, but I think there is a very strong possibility. It's hard to say where. I think he would be a great fit for the Rangers if they don't go the Domi route. I want to say go for a more cheaper option. Then Deneau could be that guy, so be on the lookout there. But a lot of teams are going to be interested in him. He's one of the better, if not one of the best, uh, two-way sermon in the NHL race. Right? already top 10 in that category. Um, what his stats have shown over the past couple of years. So be on the lookout for Deneau. It would be a huge loss to the Habs, so I wouldn't bank on it, but it won't surprise me either to see him moved. Next up now, we have Johnny Boychuk for the New York Islanders. They would love to get rid of that contract probably because they have a lot of guys to resign with not so much time to do it. So we'll see what happens there. But Boychuk, I could very well see be jumped as a veteran leader, similar to Mark Stahl to the Detroit Red Wings. So be on the lookout there. Next up, we have Brandon Sutter for the Vancouver Canucks. I'm not sure if there would be many teams that would be willing to be a taker, Unlike the Sutter, the Ottawa Senators come to mind as a possible salary dump, so take that into account, but I'm not completely sold on Sutter being dealt easily at this point in time. Jaden Schwartz now at 35 for the St. Louis Blues. Schwartz is another guy to consider, no question. Um, Schwartz, I think the LA Kings could be a possible fit as well. Um, I think a lot of teams will be interested in him as a top nine forward. But the Blues not re-signing Petrangelo more than likely. I think there's a solid chance Schwartz stays. Same thing with Tyler Bozak at, at um, 36. They could very well deal him, but it won't necessarily be an easy task given his cap hit of over 5 mil, I believe. So Bozak is a guy who I think they're only going to dealt if the opportunity really presents itself. Tell. They're considering it, no doubt, but Bo Bozak is a guy who would probably be subject to more of a dump than anything else. So be on the lookout there, but I'm not sure how slow I am on it at this point in time. 
Next up, we have Jonathan Marchessault for the Vegas Golden Knights. He is a possibility who could be dealt if, say, they're trying to go hard and on Petrangelo, among others. But I think Paul Stasi might be more subject to being dealt than Marchessault put per se so i'm not really not that sold on marcia soul being dealt at this point in time um so i what i'm not going to bank on that i'm really not um alec martinez is a guy who i think will stay for vegas as well even given his cap it i thought he looked strong with vegas and his short stint with them thus far um, after being traded from the la canes um so i think he's he's had a nice fit with vegas and i don't think that they're really looking for looking to shop him all that much at this point in time at least paul stasny however at 39 is a guy i really think could be dealt this offseason if they do go hard for a defenseman like Petrangelo, among others, maybe even a Matt Dumba, if you will. So be on the lookout there. Phil Kessel at number 40 for the Arizona Coyotes. They are definitely going to try to get rid of that contract, probably, and a full-on salary dump. So we'll see what happens. Uh, you can look at rebuilding teams as a possibility, but he may very well have a, say, no trade clause. And if he does, then that definitely limits things. I'm not sure if he does or not at this point in time. If he does, let me know in the comments below. But if he doesn't, then he very well could be dumped somewhere. It's just a matter of when and where. Chris Russell for the Edmonton Oilers, the right hand defenseman. If the Oilers do address that defense and Russell does become more susceptible to be dealt, I think the Winnipeg Jets are another team to look at to add more depth on that right side. Um, next up, you have Vinny Trocek for the Carolina Hurricanes. I think he's staying put. They could use him going forward um, in that center role for sure. They don't have great center depth by any means. Jordan Stahl, Stahl is solid, but outside of that, there isn't too much there currently, so I think Trocek would be fine to stay with the Carolina Hurricanes as of now. Um, then you get to alexander wenberg for cbj i think there's a possible chance he will be dealt as say part of a bigger bigger deal if they do say land line a for instance not that i had him that going there originally but if that were to happen i could see wenberg going the other way to add center depth to the jets so just another team to consider of course but wenberg if a big deal doesn't happen i think he very well could stay in columbus um next up you have uh brandon montour for the buffalo sabers i think montour is going to stay there at this point in time he is a rfa i believe um or at least going to be an rfa but nonetheless i don't think martor is going anywhere i think buffalo would wouldn't be that smart to lose him at this point in time i think he should stay put tony d'angelo i fully expect to stay with the rangers unless they really can't come with the same number um going up going into arbitration that would be the only argument to say he gets dealt by this point in time i do think that he will stay in new york but time will tell um evan bouchard i think for edmonton will stay unless he's part of a bigger deal i don't think they're gaining all of reckman larson obviously because he's not on their list so i wouldn't bank on him being dealt bouchard i think he has a bright future and it will be with the edmonton oilers but who knows um next up we have devin dumnik who was dealt already then at um 48 we have marty jones he's not going anywhere i think he's staying with san jose as part of that tandem then we have dougie hamilton for the carolina hurricanes i don't see hamilton dealt as as long as he's not part of like a patrick line deal so i wouldn't bank on him being dealt and sergey Bobrovsky, no one's taking on that contract for the florida panthers and that's going to conclude this video guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below as always do you agree with my picks where do you think these players are going to land if you have any opposing ideas than i do please let me know in the comments below like i said these are just fun subject to um subject to change as the next coming days throughout this week happen regarding the nhl and all these trades ahead make sure to check out the live stream tomorrow hope to see you guys there that's gonna be a lot of fun i can't wait and i, I just i'm simply ecstatic for this year's draft and everything going out this week it's gonna be insane gonna be crazy busy but it's gonna be a fun busy all at the same time but make sure you check out my previous videos regarding the trades regarding the san jose sharks earlier today with donato and devin dubnik check out my trade rumor videos check out draft height videos with the top 10 rankings for this nhl prospects in this year's draft class and my two hour long mock draft with stat boy steven that was so much fun make sure to check out all this stuff guys as always thank you all so much hit like and subscribe if you like this kind of hockey content and i will see you guys tomorrow